Oh, hi there, guys. In this video, I just want to talk about uh, Usyk win. Um, you know, I did visit Ukraine um, about two and a half years ago. Stayed with a brother there and uh, painted a couple of pictures of Alexander Usyk. And uh, without a doubt, he's one of the best pound-for-pound -pound boxers. But uh, certainly after the display against uh, Joshua, surprised a lot of people. Um, he put no more than about five or six pounds on, which is less than half a stone uh, since his last fight. But um, you have to say that Joshua just didn't have a fight plan. You just got to say that um, there's too many chiefs and not enough cooks, you know, as in his training camp. Uh, a lot of his supporters have obviously criticised his um, fact that this main head trainer um, I don't think was around for most of the training camp but uh, you know without a doubt Tony Bellew has got one of the best or if, if not the best boxing brains in the sport the past few decades you know he even got a Rocky movie um, I think it was Rocky 6 um, anyhow but um, Usyk beat him and it was just because his body failed him, really. He got tired. He was just a little bit old. But he was actually winning that fight against Usyk. But you can see that Usyk just clearly won that fight almost every round on points. Um, so I believe that uh, Belly wanted to even fight Joshua for the title at that time, which he was put off by, you know, the British boxing elite. And I think one of the... Um, one of the uh, scorecards, or one of the um, ref, um, not referees, one of the people who you know do the scorecards was British, and he had Joshua winning the first uh, seven or eight rounds or something. He didn't give, even give one round to Usyk, which which shows you there is prejudice there. I always know that there is prejudice for Joshua in the British boxing elite, but um, sorry, one of the judges. But even the, the, the championship rounds, you know, the last four rounds, clearly Usyk didn't, didn't lose any of these rounds. And uh, so that's how it is, guys. I mean, um, Usyk deserved to win that fight. Um, most of us predicted if Joshua um, just fought to, to fought a good fight, he could have won that fight if he imposed himself on it, but he didn't. So it's rather interesting, you know, that um, a number of years ago uh, I made a prophecy that it'd be a, a British um, fighter who would be basically the heavyweight champion um, just before the return of, of Jesus Christ. And it's just interesting that there's at least three or four, maybe even more, five um, British heavyweights that could actually fulfill that prophecy. Um, my top five at the moment has to be um, Fury and then you'd have to see Usyk and then um, a lot of people um, are, are surprised at the up and coming Joe Joyce but he actually gave a good account of himself against Usyk when he fought him about 10 years ago I think it was and they don't call him the juggernaut for nothing I believe that Joyce would easily beat Joshua at the moment as well so I put him as my third uh, in the world and then I'll, I'll go for Wilder because he's been very quiet since the loss almost two years ago now, <clears throat> over a year and a half ago now with uh, Wilder. So it's a bit of an unknown entity, Wilder. So I put him as number four. And then I put Joshua there at number five. And questionably, there's a lot of big stars coming through that are going to challenge um, in the next year. But uh, obviously the social and economic situation the world is having just now, um, obviously... The Christians know what's, what's going on. They feel the pinch because um, the world is just descending into sort of rivalries, just gang mentality now. Um, so that's sort of what it will descend to because of the lack of investment in jobs and uh, obviously prosperity, even though there's some still some prosperity churches that are trying to talk about that. But they're just not in line with the word of God and the fact that if it comes right down to it, could the congregation pray for manna? Would they be that obedient to the word of God that God would honor them with miracles and food and drink? You know, that um, because obviously the food and drink just now is largely contaminated and 
Um, a lot of them are dedicated to different idols and different gods. The Bible does warn Christians about that, you know, to have your own water and food supply. But obviously Satan knows this. That's why he's broken down all the Christ most of the Christian communities in the world now. So that's what's going on, guys. I mean, it's a, that's a very depressing situation. I don't know, whatever way you look at it. Um, you know, I've been preaching and prophesying for a long number of years now. You can see the reaction on this channel, just uh, it's very poor, just people just don't understand really what, um, can't really make sense of these things and yet maybe some of them are involved in secret societies and they just want to uh, stifle, they just want to cause uh, argument and what have you, division, to defend their champions who God will judge, God has already judged some of them, TV Joshua is one of them. and. Uh, there's a lot of up-and-coming ministers that are occultists as well. Um, occultism just means that they use certain rituals to actually get um, things in the physical world to make themselves look holy or spiritual or something to that effect. But a lot of these signs and wonders aren't done through the Holy Spirit. And I've been also calling out Benny Hinn, which he's really backed down from the prosperity gospel. Made videos about him years ago. Um, still people deceive that um, you know God is somehow happy with that man. It's not just about the prosperity gospel. It's about the fact that he's in alignment with certain spiritual things which are not correct, which are not from the Holy Spirit. Um, hallelujah. And even though I've criticized um, maybe one or two deliverance ministers here online, I wouldn't go to the point as to put them in that category with... Um, these big uh, preachers that really just milk the gospel or milk the Bible itself for money. I wouldn't quite put them in that category. Um, I've left one or two videos on here about um, people like Chris Lasala, who my ex-ministry partner really followed for a long time. And he became more hostile against him than I did. Um, and I, I've, I've just made, I got one dream about him. And I called him out in one video, just like, okay, brother, let's, Let's just sit down and see, you know, fully repent before God and then just let the Holy Spirit um, burn out any any demons with, within our lives. And I'll, I'll use the name Yahweh. You can use the name Jesus if you want. It doesn't really bother me. So I don't have a problem with using Hebrew names. I don't see that as a demonic thing. And yet the Jesus only see this as somehow pagan or demonic, that you're using God's name. What, how, how would you call that? Would you say that was rather demonic or would, would you stand with them and say, yeah, you know, in fact, you know, Mary and Joseph, the, the name that they got from the angel was Jesus. Can you prove that? Nobody can prove that because in the, in the Hebrew language, uh, the name for deliver and salvation, hallelujah, is, is Yeshua. Some pronounce it Yeshua, Yoshua. That's all right, there's slight variations in pronunciation, just as there is in languages and any other name. You know, it's, it's not a big deal, but the Jesus only, again, will just cause major problems with that. And it's very hypocritical because that name came from the, the name Isis or Isis. That's where, the, where Jesus came from. And we know that that is a, a pagan deity. It's a, it's a pagan deity from, from Egypt. Um, but in preaching the gospel in connection with that name in the spiritual realm a believer is recognized as the son of god and when uh, an angel you know are speaking a heavenly language for example and then when we're listening to them and it comes out in english we'll hear the name jesus but they're saying yeshua but we're hearing jesus that's another um that's another use of the the true gift of tongues is that um, someone can be speaking one language and the other person can hear a different language. And it's the same with the heavenly languages that the angels speak as well. Again, 99.9% .9 of the church will just, will just be lost in the things I've just said there. They just won't recognize them, don't understand them. Um, hallelujah. So, yeah, I just thought I'd cover a few topics in this video, let you know how I'm getting on. Um, with my boy um, so basically I've been doing a lot of praying 
um, God made it so that I met one of, the, one of the chiefs of the town and we went there to the house. And so we're waiting on the family now just to conclude this, this matter, waiting on one of the uncles to, to get some time to, for us to sit down and discuss the way forward with regards to this. You know, if I went to court, um, which I really should start thinking about doing, but the court system is meant to be one of the most corrupt systems in this country, which is saying a lot because we know how corrupt it is in our own countries. This entire country is just from the least to the greatest are all corrupt. Um, and I've, I've shared uh, some <clears throat> testimonies and conversations with Nigerian pastors that have told me what goes on here in, in these countries, um, Ghana and Liberia and Togo, these, these countries that are deeply into um, satanic covenants and even a black covenant as well has been established here um, since independence. So which I've known about, which God has been telling me about, it's very difficult to share that online. Um, but it is a true fact, you know, these things are just, just a fact of life here. Um, but it's through the grace of God that I can come, do the work of God, serve the Lord. I've been helping orphans the past week as well. Um, as an orphan that um, somebody said they would give, give him a place in the school as long as certain items like desks, chairs, etc. were fixed. So I went with my, my hammer and my saw and fixed several desks. Didn't get paid for it either because I'm a foreigner, you know, they just won't pay me for any work. But I just see that as a blessing. Hallelujah. And, and we have the opportunity when God opens these things up to us. You know, it happened on the Feast of the Tabernacles, Jesus' birth week. Hallelujah. Which I'll leave just a little uh, link to just the, the, where I was yesterday, the last great day. Went down to the beach. So I'll just leave that picture with you. And uh, you can we can just all pray together that the Lord's will is done in our life. And that, um, as the Bible says, in the last days, that the holy will become more holy, the righteous more righteous, but also the wicked more wicked and so on. <clears throat> so that's what, exactly what we're seeing today. So be strengthened in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. If you hear that as Jesus Christ, that's fine. I don't mind that at all. But, um, you know, know that all the spiritual gifts are active and available in the believer's lives. I've never disputed that. And, uh, you know, that uh, we, we just, our hope, our hope for this life and definitely the next life is in our Lord, Yahshua HaMashiach, the Sovereign, the King of the Universe, in fact. He's not just the Lord, he's the King of the Universe. He's the one who is not only the lawgiver, as, as kings are, but he's the one who fulfilled that law and died for us, hallelujah, and brought the outcasts of Israel back into the fold, which many of us are identified through the Holy Spirit are. And it doesn't mean... You're a black Israelite if God has told you that you are an Israelite. You don't need to be black or white or yellow or green. Um, but basically the transformation happens within us. And uh, hallelujah. So may the Lord bless you. Thank you for listening to this video. And well done to Alexander Rusik. This is the last day of what many Bible scholars uh, call the Jesus birth week or the Feast of Booths. In the Bible where God says I'm going to come and dwell with man the book of Isaiah so uh, this is how any real uh, people that read the Bible don't need to be a scholar at all somebody that prayerfully reads the Bible will be able to identify dwelling God saying he's coming to dwell with man in human flesh which he did in the Son of God the Word of God Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. So, uh, the sea here is very, very rough in this uh, near the Gold Coast. Um, on holidays, many people go in for swimming and uh, they end up drowning. You don't see too many people going in swimming, but it's perfect for surfers. There's a lot of surfers that are down the coast. Um, enjoying themselves um, just a few people here that live uh, just on the beach and some people they build these little shelters little booths so they can come and people can sit that's pretty cool you know 
Very, very nice. Just discovered this today walking miles and miles down the coast. Hallelujah.